Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm in Old Woking, North Surrey. The reason I wanted to come here, if you remember in the video from Priorford I did last year, I want to come north of the A3 a little bit more um, and explore some of the uh, territory around this area. Now, I'm at a fantastic church, which may be a big game changer for me because of my love of old medieval doors. Let's hope I can find it. So I'm at uh, St. Peter's Church in Old Woking, 11th century church, absolutely glorious. Uh, and on this trip, I'm gonna be uh, exploring a couple of others today as well that are nearby. One I've been to before. Um, look at this, wow. check that out. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be. Lovely wet paint, oh, I won't touch that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look, look inside. disturb him. So where is this door then? Where is this? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, where's the... so I'm looking for this ancient door. I don't quite know where it is. I couldn't see anything in the, in the actual church itself but it does look like the photo I saw is on the inside. I walk straight through it, here it is. The original oak door, Norman oak door from 1115 AD. Look at that, that's beautiful. This is the oldest door in Surrey and the third oldest door in England. Wow. Yes, my love of old doors and old medieval doors has really paid off today. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Now I've seen that old door, what else is there to do in life? <laughs> well chuffed, I've been wanting to see that for ages. I didn't actually know it was the oldest door until quite recently. The oldest door in Surrey, but the third oldest in England. Imagine your IKEA furniture lasting for a thousand years. Now this church apparently had uh, Saxon origins. There was a Saxon structure here before. This is Norman, but there are, I don't know if there's Saxon foundations, but there was something on the side beforehand. It's absolutely beautiful. I was worried of getting all the way down here and the church would have been closed, but no, it's open every day for visitors and people would come in like the gentleman to do private prayer. As I said before, I'm not religious. I don't really understand religion. Spirituality I do. Um, but uh, yeah, each of their own, whatever works for you, really, to make you a better person. Pick up here, let's have a quick look up here. That's a different perspective when you look down into the nave in the chancel. So you've got seating up here. I don't know if it's for everybody or it's for special people. What's great, you can actually touch the arches up here. It's lovely. Lovely church. Old Woking is lovely, it's very historic. I mean, you think of Woking, you think of the town centre and the modern town centre. Um, 
but uh, old working's full of little treasures. Full of little treasures. Yeah. Very nice. So the church is originally 11th century, but there's a lot of 13th century additions and a few more as we go along into present times. Yeah, I think the main feeling, the main structure of the church is 13th century. It's very nice. Okay, let's have a quick look around Old Woking, show you some of the buildings. And one more time before we go, the oldest store in Surrey. My work here is done. Well, that's church number one done. We're now heading back down the road to a church I've been to before but couldn't get inside. See, so interested if we can get inside this time and tell you about another local legend and then a pub lunch. quickly show you we're in Clandon Park which is right next door to the church uh, we visited here in 2019 so I'll link that video before uh, below before I'll link that video below very very interesting the restoration going on in there but it seems to be closed today um, but yeah we did go in there a couple of years ago we had to have hard helmets on and all, all the rest of it but it was absolutely fascinating yeah approximately 4 p.m. on Wednesday the 29th of April 2015 a fire broke out in the basement um, when we were talking to one of the guides there, you'll see it in the video below if you click it, um, they said it was an electrical fault. Uh, not like modern electrics, it was a, a, a server that had been sort of not forgotten, it just was old and uh, decided to ignite. But yeah, I'll link that video below. So I've brought you back to St Peter and St Paul's Church in West Clandon right next, to, next door to Clandon Park, Clandon House, which we've been to before. And the reason I was here last time, I'd gone to Waverley Abbey, but didn't look at their website, and it was closed because they were doing some filming there. So I thought, oh bugger, what am I gonna do? So coming back, I saw this church and thought, oh, let's have a quick look in here. But it was um, shut originally. So it's original Saxon church, Foundations for Saxon, but this is mostly Norman in origin. And there are apparently some uh, wall paintings inside. So let's go and have a look. Original painted panels from the 13th century. Incredible art, I mean the age of it, 13th century. I always wonder what they would look like sort of when they were first done and the vivid colours coming out. Isn't that incredible?
members of the congregation, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'd be very much appreciated. Clandon has a very interesting little legend attached to it about a dragon that terrorised this lane uh, who was eventually defeated by a soldier and his dog. Now the earliest mention of this legend is about 1797 I think, or 17, no 1776 sorry, but it was first mentioned in print in 1796 in the Gentleman's Magazine. But what's interesting about that is the Gentleman's Magazine also ran a report uh, in the 1800s about the Buckland Shag, which I've mentioned in other videos. Um, also a sort of dragonly, but this was a dragonly water, water creature. So the Gentleman's Magazine, back in the day, were they just trying to sort of pump up sales a little bit by adding these legends on. But these could be agent legends. The one in Clandon here could be word of mouth going back hundreds of years, but say the first mention of it was uh, 1776, I think. So it's, it's interesting, good going back to medieval times. And what prompts these legends? What prompts these legends? It's interesting, isn't it? Clans is a really nice little little village actually. And show you, once again you've got a main road going through that goes up to Woking. Um, but what can you do? A legend of Clandon and the dragon. If you actually look on some of the signs, there's a dragon on, on the sign on the street signs. So this church is Saxon in origin and then rebuilt in the 1150s. Because a lot of these um, churches were, and then lots of rebuilding done by the Victorians, not about here, but in, or a lot of the churches by the Victorians, those pesky Victorians. They're saying the font is probably 12th century, 12th century font. Not this top bit, that looks modern, but uh, all the stonework here. 12th century. It's a very dark ch church here, but I've only just realised you actually can switch on the lights. Uh, God, bleach out. So there you go, it's a bit better. Yeah, absolutely lovely. As I said at the church at Woking, you know, I'm not religious. Um, I am into high consciousness, so. Um, but the church is just such a wonderful place to contemplate and meditate, get your thoughts together. I seem to get ahead when I walk into churches. Like, oh, I did over at St Peter's actually earlier, but I didn't mention it. And I just had a little bit here. I'm not. I, I'm not talking, I do talk, <laughs> is it psychic? I don't know, but um, it's what I get. I don't pick up anything, I'm not, a, I'm not a medium or a psychic or anything, but you know, I do pick up any, what I like to call energies, when I, especially when I do dowsing and the earth energy currents. Um, prayer area, there is nothing too small to share with God. It's quite nice, isn't it? So that was nice. That sort of makes up for that past investigation here when I couldn't get inside, originally because I couldn't get to Waverley Abbey, just stopped here, but here I could get inside, it was wonderful. So now I think it's time for a pub lunch. I've already booked into the Onslow Arms just down the road, so uh, let's head on down there. I think this is a very popular pub because the car park's almost full. Um, you don't really usually see that midweek. But um, yeah, interesting. Let's go in, shall we?
So that was a really nice lunch at the Onslow Arms in West Clandon. Really nice service, great food, a great dining area as well. And really popular. I've never been in a pub lunch sort of at this time midweek where it's almost packed. It's almost full. Really incredible. So yeah, I really, the Onslow Arms in West Clandon, I really recommend. The Duke of Wellington pub, circa 1561. Oh, you can actually come up to this folly in East Halsley. It's great. I've driven past this hundreds of times um, through East Halsley. You remember I did a video from the church here last year, I think it was, and it was closed. Um, not like today, where all the churches have been open, which has been great. But yeah, I've always wondered about these, these follies. So I'm at St Martin's Church in West Hoathley, on the road down to Dorking. I've never stopped here before, but there's something interesting I want to show you. Luck always, if I can find it. Um, apparently the church is open, so we're gonna have a quick look inside. It's Norman in origin. So a very ancient church, very uh, flint walls. Oh, we've done three churches today, it's not bad, is it? But yeah, here we are, flint walls. Very nice. Let's have a little look inside. That's interesting. Here lies the body of Thomas Cornwallis Esquire, sometimes uh, groom porter to Queen Elizabeth I. Wow. It's very unusual to see effigies in normal churches, uh, in sort of regional um, uh, village churches seeing an effigy. It's somewhat sport a little bit. <laughs> The TV, there's a TV in with the effigies. I've got to admit, I'm quite pleased today. I thought, oh, please let the churches be open. Every church I've been into today has been open, which has been great, absolutely great. There we go. The Earls of Lovelace of Ockham and Horsley. A couple of years ago, I tried to find some of the um, Lovelace uh, bridges and I couldn't find them for some reason. I'm not doing very well, am I? Um, but yeah, they're like Earls of Lovelace. Another lovely old door. These little ridgets in. Like an entrance into the secret garden, you know. So this is the tomb of the Lovelaces, uh, of one of the Earls of Lovelace, who died in 1898. This is their mausoleum. And he was married to Ada 
Lovelace. And Ada Lovelace was working with a mathematician in the Victorian era on an analytical machine. A very early sort of computer. And she's widely regarded as the world's very first computer programmer. Not computers as we know them now, but an analytical machine they called it. But she is say widely regarded as the very first computer program programmer in the world. Ava Lovelace. Thank you, Ava. She died quite young, unfortunately. Um, but as I say, her work lives on. So there you go. Three churches we've explored today. Three and a pub lunch in the Onslow Arms. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do the old like, subscribe and all that stuff. I wonder where our adventure takes us next. We'll see you next time. Take care.